Leon likes bubbles. Ah, so do most drug addicts. <laughs> Back to our stupid reactions again. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram. It's Rick. Thanks so much for watching. Freak you out. Freak you out. I'm Hershey. Today we're doing a food video. This is from the Best Ever Food Review Show. I love the Best Ever Food Review Show. This is rare Indian food. Indian dessert food. Rare Indian dessert food. That means it's undercooked. This is actually cooking underground. Whoa. <laughs> Rajasthani style. Undercooked, <laughs> underground, Rajasthani style cooking dessert with rare Indian dessert food. Cod lamb. Watch your language, Corbin. Uh, okay, I'm gonna it's honest. a dessert food with lamb cooked underground in Rajasthan? I'm guessing they're gonna let us know, but we did not get to do this when we were in Rajasthan, uh, but we were there for a day. No. Thanks, Air India. Uh, <laughs> we will never forget or forgive. <laughs> Here we go. This is the moment of truth. Is it good? I really no, it's so. good. <laughs> I need an ending to this video. <laughs> My first foodie mission into India brought me to two of its most massive cities, Delhi and Mumbai. This city is home to some of the most Look at that butter. food I have ever seen. Now I'm back with a special focus on northwestern India, starting our journey in the semi-arid deserts of Rajasthan. Every home has, has, has their own recipes, but this kind of food, Ooh. not too many people know about. I'm here for it's a filling food. on a I'm red camera. Look at how clean desert and clear. In the ground. Now they're gonna cover it on top of it. Wow. Ajit and Uday are leading the way. They're the driving force nice behind stash. Overlander India. With the mission of demystifying Rajasthan's many gems, including certain complex foods. You know what we produce, right? Um, uh, yes. We'll be literally dozens of miles from civilization, and things are gonna get spicy. One thing I wanted to wow. do, and we almost did, uh, if we had more so time in Rajasthan, we'd go on a safari. Don't worry, I'm oh, leaving yeah. some room for dessert. Didn't have time, obviously. obviously. Amal Sabha, which literally translated into English tiger tiger means opium ceremony. In the Northeast. So grab your ghee, because we're doing desert cooking Rajasthani style. Oh, wrong ghee. Oh, that looks good. Before any feasting can begin, Ajit has invited me to be part of a welcoming ceremony with some locals. Welcome awesome. to the village, sir. That's a welcome tikka for you. Oh. A welcome tikka. What is yes. the significance of this? Whenever you are being welcomed into somebody's home, you're welcome like this. Wow. But sometimes you I would love stuff like somebody, that. But that's if it was a bigger occasion, like if you were coming to attend a wedding or something. Yeah. This isn't that big of an occasion. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we can go in now. Alright, thank you very much. We're inside a mutt with the village head, who's about to offer his version of a welcome drink. This gentleman is Mr. Padam Bhatti. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having us. We are here actually to witness a very old ceremony. <coughs> the ceremony is known as the Amal Sabha, which literally translated into English means opium ceremony. Sweet. In the West, you would open a bottle of champagne. Over here, you smoke you opium. A little bit of opium. <laughs> this type of ceremony Love traditionally it. uses real opium, but since opium is now illegal in India, we'll just use molasses and uh, pretend it's opium. Ah. Right. <laughs> wait, wait. Hello, gentlemen. What do we have here? It's for the opium ceremony. What is being poured in there? Basically, one part opium, three parts molasses, then mixed with water, and then it's going to be filtered. So now he's going to offer it to huh. the gods. Since I'm not wearing a turban, with my left hand, I would cover my head with my hand. With my right hand, the ring finger, I would offer some to the gods as well. Mm. And then I would consume it directly from his hand. I'll watch how you do it here. Okay, ring finger. Some to the gods. So it's no, no smoke. Should I do it in the same way? Yes, absolutely. All right, so he pours it onto his hand, covering my head and my left hand. And then... I don't, I don't know that I could do that. Yes. The flavor is like a little bit of aspirin that's been diluted in water. It's, it's a bit bitter. It feels like one puff of a cigarette. Are we done here then? Yeah, we're pretty much done. I don't think about touching first. people, so drinking out of somebody's uh, hand is... Uh, Thank you very much. At least it's not out of the belly button. Now that I'm all bust up on molasses, we're driving to the middle of the desert to the Overlander campground. Today we're sampling some old traditional Rajasthani recipes. Oh. Recipes that came about that looks spicy though, but it looks good. But delivered completely <laughs> See all those seeds and those red peppers? Molasses. 
Yes. But what else is on the menu for today? So what we are going to do today is cook lamb in a very different way. We are going to cook what's known as cut lamb. The cooking is going to be done underground. Going to be... Are these camels? Yes, these are camels. Whoa, these, these are, are just like the trees. This is cattle <laughs> grazing land, so you'll see cattle, you'll see camels. Wow. So back to the cut. During war, the soldiers would use this method of cooking underground. Mm -hmm. They left no trace of it whatsoever. Right. We'll be making another lamb, which is known as jungling lamb. It's made with five ingredients. And the West, it's like five. That seems normal. In India, that's like there's nothing in our dish. We're only using five ingredients. The idea behind this recipe is that if you got stranded somewhere, anywhere you were, you would have these five ingredients available. All right. Well, here we are. I guess uh, your team is going to get to digging. Um. Yes. Um, and you. You have the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's rough ground. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> I'm told this is the most important kitchen utensil we're using today, but um, that's gonna take a while. Some guidance, Ude. Hey man, how you doing? <laughs> this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're it making off. a hole. It's two foot by two foot and then two feet deep. Yes. We're gonna fill the bottom with coal and put uh, the leg of lamb and cover the hole with mud again, and we'll wait for about two hours. Oh, it takes two hours. All right, that's kind of a slow cooker. Everything's huh? two, two by two by two. Right. Cook it for two. Symbolism. Um, from here, the hole will be dug <laughs> off camera, <laughs> right? Yes. Once the hole is dug, Ude walks me through how to perfectly spice our lamb. Right here, we have the leg of lamb. We're ready to prepare. Yes. Walk me through this. These are the spices that everybody knows. Cinnamon, cardamom, black pepper, cloves, coriander, turmeric, onion powder, and pea. This is roasted onion? Yes. It looks like ground coffee. <laughs> All these spices combined yeah. create the garam masala, yeah. which is right here. Mm. Wow. Fragrant, aromatic, and very wow. fresh. <laughs> yeah. Taste it. An explosion. It's an explosion in your mouth, isn't it? Yeah. A little hot too. If you taste the marinade, it's very, very sharp. But the end result is very nice. After scoring the lamb, this baby is going to get an avalanche of seasoning. And it starts simply with some garlic and a basic marinade. What are you making in this one? I'm going to make another paste of spices, which is going to be mixed in ghee, and we'll pour it on top. So we start with red chilies. Coriander powder. Yeah. A little bit of turmeric, salt, ghee. Oh, I'm going to mix it. Yeah, that looks potent. Try to, I mean, a um, buttload of ghee in here, which is a, a kitchen term. <laughs> Mild, isn't it? It's not sharp at all. It's pretty intense to me. It's intense. <laughs> it's not oh, all right, we've got <laughs> banana leaves, <laughs> tin foil leaves, and then perhaps the most interesting part of this to me, I'm actually surrounding <coughs> the whole leg with, with all these rotis. With the rotis. See, rotis also act as a buffer. It will not let your meat get burnt. Now you're going to put on that lovely sauce. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow, that is so much spice. There's as much seasoning as there is meat on here. Is it impossible to over-season this? You can over-season it. It's always good to overdo it than underdo it. Once it's soaked in masala, the lamb is encased with even more rotis, banana leaves, and tinfoil leaves. This bundle is slid inside a damp burlap sack, protecting the lamb from burning. Finally, our lamb cooking apparatus requires a handle for easier retrieval. You'll see what I mean soon. So what's happening here? I'm just gonna wipe this a little bit. The hole is now moist. <laughs> <laughs> so the hot embers coming in, and then well, you, put the meat you wanna make the sure the hole's so moist exactly before you get to work. Wire handle on here. The embers are heating up that wet sack and... Child. Your embers are heating up my wet sack. No sand to lock in the heat. With no thermometer, the only issue remaining is having no idea if it's actually finished cooking. Bad pickup lines. While we wait, Ajit introduces today's second main course. What's our second course today? <laughs> it's called jungli meat. Jungli means quail. Uh -huh. Very easy to cook. Five key ingredients. Ghee, which is clarified butter, red chilies, all and in powdered form, coriander seeds, garlic, crushed as well as all, and salt. And of course, then we have lamb. We're going to start off by putting the ghee. Once ghee has heated up a little bit, we're just going to put everything else in together. Oh, beautiful. Instantly frying up. We got the whole chilies in there, chili powder. And what are you putting in now? These are coriander and the seeds. A bunch of salt, put it in the garlic. Wow. So all the five ingredients, and now we're going to be leaving it to here to cook. And that's it. Wow. Yeah, I love it. About 45 minutes later, our jungly moss is ready. Served on a fresh, warm chapati or Indian flatbread. Spritz it with some lime and prepare oh. to have your breath take it away. All right, so I'm going to scoop up a nice piece of meat, super hot, and just 
soak up some of those amazing spices. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Oh, that is to die for. That so good. simple, yeah. but so delicious. Just rich, incredible heat. It feels really complete for just being a handful of ingredients in there. This is gonna be joining our meal with the cod lamb. We're gonna wait just a little bit for that Absolutely. and then take it up. I'll take that. <laughs> About two hours has now passed. The lamb cud is finished, or just maybe finished. Ude seems to think the lamb is at least Probably finished. How long has it been cooking now? About two hours. How do you know if it's done? I don't know. We're just trying to <laughs> and see how it looks, huh? Yeah. All right, so we're removing all these hot embers. You're gonna use the pick to You do it and then you the tell, and then if it's hand not, hand. you've got to put it back in. Wow. What happened? Is everything okay? Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, no wonder we need the wire on there. That would suck to get out otherwise. You can see the bottom here. It's not even burnt all the way through the gunny sack, but hopefully it's cooked all the way through. Ude removes the wire, burlap sack, and leaves, leaving us now with just the moment of truth. Do I have an ending for this video? The winds are roaring. The gods are praising us for our great efforts. This is the moment of truth. Is it good? I really hope so. <laughs> I need an ending to this video. All right. So he's cutting off some of this meat. I'm seeing a little bit of it. Yeah. Oh my. Thank oh, you. It looks it perfect. Got yeah. Ooh. Got an answer. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Pick it up. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. It's all right. Oh, it's stunning. That is so delicious. Wow. It's nice. <laughs> it looks like barbacoa. It's very tender. Just a ton yeah, of spices. Yeah, like the tender does. It looks a lot like shower. barbacoa. You're right. It's yeah. not overpowering yeah. at all. So you can see here, the roti is just caked in spices. Oh. The outside is still kind of dry and almost like it has a little crispy edge to it. The inside's mm. a little soggy, soaking up all the spices. I want you to enjoy it with me. I mean, I didn't dig the hole, but you did everything else. And also, I didn't dig the hole. Cheers. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Mmm. Super. Mm hmm. Wow. Smart. <laughs> Hold on. Look at him, Kai, over to the side. He's like, Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a thorough food review over here. Okay. I didn't even lose One more take. Was that last one? In one more take. No, 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 no. They're so mean. Oh. <laughs> Everybody else, like your weed. Feeling a that little, low, I mean, bad. We <laughs> set out an entire spread. Two legendary Rajasthani dishes. Perhaps some of the most delicious food I've tried, not only in India, but anywhere. Rajasthan does have Rajasthani great food. food. Extremely food spicy. Food. spicy. Oh but oh everything was but so food, tasty you know, and flavorful. Yeah. How would you eat this? Simple food is some of the best food I've ever had, but to me, it's not simple at all. It's taking a handful of ingredients and really elevating the food the most and absorbing and, all and, the spices. And amazing, it's not only any flame, right. and yet it's it's just melting in the mouth and the meat is just falling off the bone. Mm. Slow oh. cooking, man. Yeah, it's mouth pleasure. At least have the happiness mouth pleasure. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure. This has been the best of his videos with those kinds of puns. Thank you so much for this experience. I mean, desert cooking. Yeah. This is how you do it. I didn't know what to expect, but you've outdone yourself. I didn't I know myself if it's gonna be cooked. <laughs> it all worked out. Yeah. Huge thank you to Overlander for this custom tour, but they do no, amazing tours here in Rajasthan. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. For you guys, this video was made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest uh, running tour company in Vietnam. Yeah, do that looked delicious. Delicious. Um, also, I'm dyslexic and I said dessert in the beginning of this video. Yeah, <laughs> you did. It was which desert I'm, food. Which I'm sure the comments won't mention at all. At all. There's uh, probably not one <laughs> comment in there about it's not dessert. I, my dyslexia messes up dessert and desert all the time. And it messes it up with people who don't all even have dyslexia. The time. Yeah, it's a common. It's a common. <laughs> Screw up. It's like, it, it's just Indian dessert food. Cool. Uh, dessert. And yeah. I was like, there's no dessert in it. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's common okay. pretty much across the board. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that would be so fun to do something like that. Yeah, especially to do something. I, I've to dig got, the hole? Yeah, have you? I would let you dig the hole. I Thank you so much. It's so kind of you. I think I've asked you this before. I have to film. Have you ever gone on safari anywhere? No, I, mean, I remember you went to yeah. Africa, though. Yeah, the, uh, it's life-changing. Outside of, obviously local places right right and disney world right 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 but no, no. it's life-changingly beautiful and oh. i would love 
to go on safari anywhere, but especially in India. I would love to be able to see. Well, you went on a safari where it's probably the best place to go on safari it, it's <laughs> in Africa. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that's a once in a lifetime trip right there, man. It really was. Yeah. I, I, that's something that's a, that's a bucket list to be able to, to one day be able to take Indrani there specifically yeah. to the game reserve. Yeah. But the best thing about it was it was just a reminder of the balance of life on the planet and how egoistic humans are. And when push comes to shove, if we really put ourselves in positions of recognizing the balance, we would live with a lot more respect for the planet <laughs> if we put ourselves in positions. Because when you're on safari, you're on their turf mm -hmm. and you got to play by their rules. And if you don't, you'll die. Mm -hmm. And the fact that when you leave safari, you know when you're laying in bed, I'm laying in bed because the animals let me. Mm -hmm. I'm alive right now because that lion, when it walked up past the car and looked at me, that wasn't, I wasn't in a freaking zoo. <laughs> there was nothing protecting me. And if the lion wanted to, I'd be dead. Mm -hmm. And that's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to do that in India. Yeah. And obviously eat that amazing yeah. food. Yeah. Um, looks wonderful. Uh, hopefully next time we are in Rajasthan. Oh, obviously Assam is obviously, weird. I think the, that's, I think a jungle more than safari. Yeah. That's where, that's where Rajasthan the is where the safari is. They're called yeah. Bengal tigers for a reason yeah. in, in that region. Great but big Bengal tiger. My goodness. Literally, no joke. You could decide as a teenager that every year you want to go on a vacation in India and do something different and do nothing else with the rest of your life and see something new every year. That's true. It's, a, it's amazing. There's always something new and beautiful to do. Well, let us know what are the food videos we react to, him or others. Uh, they always make me hungry. Or the god of food, Gordon Ramsay, as he said. Yeah. <laughs>